Hello again, it's me, Drinks Coach. Um, hope you had a good day today. Well, it's been a bit up and down the last few days, but um, you know, generally in the main, quite all right. Um, so today, what am I talking about? Um, well, it seems that spring is inexorably moving forward and we're getting into slightly more summery weather. Um, and we do have a love in this country for one particular wine. Uh, and that is Côte de Provence, Côte de Provence Rosé, in fact. Um, when you look at the amount of shelf space in this country given over to rosé compared to all other rosés in the world at Côte de Provence, I think it's something like 20, uh, 28% of the shelf space or something. Um, considering that most Côte de Provence rosé is quite quite spenny, um, it's interesting to try and to figure out why it's been such a darling to us. And I don't think it's just because a few rich... Um, second homers out there live outside Saint-Tropez or Nice. I think it's it's more than that. But there is a degree of aspirational um, drinking with, with Côte de Provence Rosé where there isn't with others. Um, what's very important to know is that as a region, it's probably the only region in Europe which, which specialises in rosé. The vineyards produce something like 82% rosé. Um, mostly, as I'll explain in a minute, Rosé is a byproduct of making good red wine. Now, Provence does make some small amount of white wine and some very, very good reds, especially out to the west in Beauzon, Provence. But um, it's really the rosé that's the story. Now, the rosé start, I think you're probably looking at supermarket Côte de Provence rosé at, at just over a tenner now, um, going up to, well, Chateau d'Escalon has rosés that cost pushing 100 euros, 100 quid even. 100 pounds for a rosé, that's pretty hard to swallow, huh? Pardon the pun. Um, so let's start with this. This is um, one of the things I wanted to talk about in this particular one, because uh, Côte, de Côte de Provence is something I drink quite a lot of in summer, um, is talking about um, presentation. Uh, when we look at white wines and red wines, we have some, each person has um, a sense of how something should look. If, if you get a bottle of Bordeaux, you want to see a sort of slightly lyrical script. You want to see a little sort of like a, 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 an écusson, a, a heraldic badge. You want to see... Um, uh, Cru classe Bordeaux. You want to certain, see certain things, and when you look at Bordeaux bottles in general, nobody's taking any risks. <laughs> but when you look at rosé, and you look at what people are drinking in restaurants, particularly those people, let's say, and there's plenty of you out there that don't like sparkling wine, that don't like champagne, don't like English sparkling, which is even higher in acid but like a soft wine, don't like wines with bubbles in. Some people just simply don't. It's a genetic thing. Um, then rosé seems to be what you're buying. It seems to be the other alternative. You go into a restaurant, you buy a bottle of rosé. Um, if it's a top-end Côte de Provence rosé, you're probably paying 40-something um, pounds on the list, which is kind of house champagne price, really. Uh, not quite, but nearly there. So let's have a look. This is the first one I want to show you. It's called Aches. You may have seen this knocking about. They sell this in Majestic, and they also sell it in big bottles. Um, even a big bottle of Aches, a Magnum, one and a half litre bottle, um, I think during season is a shade under 30 quid. So if you're spending 30 pounds on a big bottle of rosé for a party, it looks more fun. It's even more... Pavlovian for a good time than maybe a, a bottle of regular champagne, don't you think? Anyway, the other thing is the wines taste bloody good. So this was set up by a, a family. I, can't, I remember meeting the guy. I can't remember his surname, but he's um, Dutch. And I think he started about 2009. I met him in 2010 when they, I think, still didn't have a winery, when they didn't have the finished bottle, but we tasted the wines. Uh, and I was very impressed. I think the guy was in marketing uh, most of his life. And uh, he's done an exceptional job of bringing this wine to the masses. And it's very caref carefully curated in, in restaurants all over the world now. Um, so this is 2019 Aix. And Aix is one of the three main regions of rosé in Provence. Um, if we start at the west, uh, you've got a big plateau which is uh, called Beauzon Provence, which is very, very hot. In fact, there's a valley there called Val d'Enfer, which means Hell Valley. Um, so you can figure it out for yourself. It's pretty hot. Uh, and white wine isn't really their bag there. They make really powerful deep reds. Um, but then if you go further east, just slightly towards sort of the centre of Oz, um, you get up onto a high plateau and you're in Aix. And Aix is famous for both red, whites and rosés. And uh, both, all three. And uh, Aix is a, a wonderful place to visit. Um, it's very, very warm during the day. You have incredible sunshine in the morning, quite rabid heat, actually, just after lunch. And then the Mistral from the Alps 
the wind from north to south comes down the mountains, tumbling down the mountain, because remember, cold air is denser and heavier than hot air, so it rolls like water in what they call a pyroclastic flow down the mountain. And um, suddenly it's like somebody's put the air conditioning on. So you've got this situation where you've got very, very hot and very cold days at the same time. Well, I say very cold, but very big difference between the hot and the cold. Um, but also you have this powerful wind which uh, not only cools down all the grapes and keeps the freshness and the acidity in the wine, but it also um, blows away most of the possible um, uh, mycel problems, fungus, rot. That all gets blown away and it keeps the vineyards nice and dry, keeps the, the skins develop a thickness um, in the wind. Um, so you end up with very, very healthy grapes. And in fact, in the, that is the case for quite a lot of the Cote Provence, uh, particularly aches, that um, most of the production is organic. Uh, so they don't need to use anything. Um, so, Aix Rosé, let's try it. First time this year. Beautiful sort of strawberries and fruity nose. Mm. The acidity's there. You get this wonderful twang. Almost like biting into a tangerine or a satsuma at Christmas. Delicious fruit salad wine. Um, it tastes like jelly with tangerine slices in it. <laughs> it's quite nice. Um, lovely wine, lovely bottle, lovely packaging. I'm sure you'll agree. Let's move on to the next region. And this is another beautiful package. This is all about prettiness of bottle here, just to prove the point, really. Love by Laub. Chateau Laub is owned by a family called the Bamford family, who aren't short of a few bob. I think it was Caterpillar Construction or something. I could be wrong. Big construction company. Um, JCB. That's Bamford, isn't it? And uh, they own this super swanky organic um, uh, food company called Dalesford Organic. You may have come across it. They have the most amazing bacon at like three quid a slice. You know, it's kind of... Also, I met a guy called Ollie Hansen with my wife at um, a Scandinavian midsummer feast who um, in East London used to make smoked salmon by hanging the salmon up. And then he used to play jazz on a piano to the salmon, thinking that it would help to penetrate the smoke. And he makes the most mind-blowing smoked salmon. And now um, I think they've curated him to make their smoked salmon. Uh, it's like 55 quid a side, but you've eaten nothing like it in your life. Um, it's like... The closest thing you're going to get to European super sashimi, really. Anyway, so Love by Labe is the entry wine. So uh, some of these wines are quite expensive. Chateau Labe's already 25 something pounds, and they've got two wines above that. But this is their entry wine, uh, which is very pretty. Um, it's designed to be just quaffed. It's 100% organic, as everything that uh, Dalesford does is. But isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty, right? Okay, so. What does this taste like? Well, why why have I chosen this one next? And it's not just the pretty label. Um, this is grown in the Cote de Provence itself, the core Cote de Provence, the area known as Cote de Provence AOC, not Aix-en-Provence or Cote de Varrois, which is up north, which is more rony and more continental and more intense. Um, this is 5Ks drive from the coast from Saint-Tropez. Um, so this is a very maritime, very, very sea-influenced wine. What does that do? It creates a silkiness to the wine. Because when it's very hot in the land, the Mediterranean absorbs all that heat and moderates that temperature. So if you buy the sea, it's never quite as hot or quite as cold as it is up in the hills, say, for example, in Aix. Um, when it's cool, the sea warms everything up. So you get a very, very constant temperature. This makes wines which have got less acidity, a bit, maybe less colour intensity, but they have a silkiness. And I always talk about people forgetting that food isn't just about the way it smells and tastes, but how it feels. And this wine has a dreamy softness normally to it and uh as a lot of the wines down there do um shout out to Chateau Mirabeau Steve Cronk and his family beautiful wines um and and there's many others which are down there on the south coast of the Provence anyway so you just you need a pint glass for that you need it evaporates before it gets to your throat it's delicious super delicious these wines are both, I think, very well priced. So of around the 15 squid for aches, maybe slightly less if you buy it Majestic on a multi-value. Uh, Love to lay a, their entry wine, don't forget. Um, but as you've just witnessed, it's not hard to drink. <laughs> I think it's probably about 16 or 17 pounds. Bring on to a wine that I discovered um, through a friend of mine who sells it in the UK, an Australian friend called Rohan. Shout out to you, Rohan. This has got to be the best looking bottle of wine in the world. <laughs> and judging by success of selling this in London, look at that. Isn't that incredible? Wowee. 
It's just beautiful. It's got um, UP written in the glass. Ultimate Provence, it's called. And this is made right up in the foothills of the Var. So you're going up to the other key area where the most structured wines in uh, Provence are made. They make a white and they make a, a red as well. But the rosé is what it's all about. Um, but just a bottle of that in an ice bucket at night in a club. I mean, wow. I mean, gangster or what? I think it's fantastic. Um, it even looks better as a magnum, um, which is... Yeah, um, or, in fact, a Jeroboam. It's quite nice as a Jeroboam. Um, <laughs> look at that. How bling is that? I mean, that's probably 130 quid retail, 120. But in a restaurant, maybe 200 pounds. So it's, 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 um, it's three litres of joy, that is. Um, and this is one and a half litres. Um, a very famous bar in London called the Radio Bar on top of um, the hotel in the, in the Strand, the end of the Strand in Oldwich. Um, they're selling, this is out selling their house champagne and they sell cases and cases of this stuff. Um, but you know, it's not cheap. This wine starts, I think at about 25 pounds for a bottle this size. This is the 2019, which I've yet to try. Very excited. So let's have a go. Overrun again. I've got to stop my mouth going sometimes. So pale in color. What am I expecting? A bit more intensity. There's some more minerality on the nose. When I say that, it actually smells like you're standing in a cool vineyard. The, the, it, you can hear the cicadas going. You can smell the wild herb, the garrigue, which is what Provence is famous for. Smell of dried sort of sage and thyme. But then there's a smell, and it smells of stones drying in the sun. I think there's a new w word for that, which is petrichor, which means hot stone in, in Greek. It's um it's hard to to argue against drinking rosé instead of champagne these days at the price they cost, and I just wanted to show um, that in fact there is variety in in the region. What's lovely is the paleness of the wines. I think it's lovely to drink pale rosés, what the French call pelure d'oignon, onion skin rosé. Anyway, there you go. Overrun again. Uh, now I've got loads of rosé to drink. <sighs> go figure. <laughs>